Welcome to Your Daily Dose, a devotion ministry of the Faith Baptist Church of Franklin and Middletown, Ohio. Thanks for joining us each weekday as we share God's Word with you. It's your daily prescription for all that ails you. And now, Your Daily Dose. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Your Daily Dose. My name is Bob Nolan. Glad to have you with us this morning. Psalm 37, verse 23 says, David wrote that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. By the time that Doug had finally arrived at the Sunday morning high school playoff football game, the game was in the fourth quarter. His friend Bob asked him, said, Doug, what, why did it take you so long to get here? Doug said, well, you know, I had two choices. I could either go to church or I could come to the game. Bob said, well, <laughs> I mean, how hard can it be to make that decision? Doug said, well, you know, I had a hard time making that choice, so I decided to flip a coin. Bob said, Doug, come on, man, what gives? I mean, what's it take, two seconds to flip a coin? The game started over an hour ago. Doug said, well, the problem is I had to flip the coin 140 times. See, that right there is what I would call an example of abusing your free will. Jeremiah the prophet wrote uh, in chapter 7, verse 24, But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. You know, free will is a great thing. God has given us free will. But he gave us that free will for a reason and for a purpose. That purpose being that we might serve him out of will and not out of fear. When we instead abuse our free will and we, we choose to do what we please and not what pleases God, you know what? The result is inevitably evil. Jeremiah did a great job in verse 24 there because he laid out the perfect three-point sermon. First thing he said was, they hearkened not. That's an interesting word, not a word that, uh, honestly, we use a lot uh, in today's English. What does it mean? Well, what it means is to listen. Now, I want you to understand there's a difference between hearing, which is simply allowing something to go into the old ear canal, and listening. Now, listening does involve, for sure, allowing the noise into your ear, but true listening to mean, means also to give uh, attention with the ear to heed or to pay attention and give respect to the words. find it interesting if you go uh, back to the Hebrew, the word that was translated there, hearken, in Greek, is, or excuse me, Hebrew, is shalma. And that literal translation from the Hebrew word means, you ready for this, to hear intelligently, it doesn't stop there, it's to hear intelligently with the implication of attention and obedience. There's a lot in that word of hearken. Jeremiah lays it out here for us. They hearkened not. What happened? They were using their, their own free will to go against God's will, and it led to evil. Second thing he says is they inclined not their ear. Now, at face value, you, you, <laughs> you might be tempted to think that Jeremiah is kind of being redundant. He just said they didn't hearken, and now he's saying they inclined not their ear. But wait a minute, that, that's not what he's saying. Now, I will say he is doubling down on the first point. Not only did they not listen, he says they didn't incline their ears. What he's saying is they didn't listen, they didn't heed, frankly, they didn't even think about it, but the reason is the second point. They didn't incline their ear. What's he saying? He's saying that they went out of their way to not hear. They didn't prepare to hear. They didn't plan to hear. They had no purpose to hear. You see, using their free will, not only didn't they listen, they didn't even bother to hear. They didn't incline their ear. They didn't hear God's will and ended up following their own free will, and it led them to evil. And then, he says, they walked not with God. 
You know, free will is a great thing, but sometimes it just flat out gets abused. What Jeremiah was saying here was when he said they walked not in the counsel of the godly, they walked in the counsel of the ungodly, in the imagination of their own evil heart. <laughs> that last phrase of that verse, I, I mean, I could, I could probably preach a 45-minute sermon just on that last phrase. Because, you know, you have to think about Satan for a minute. You know, look, we know he's a crazy fellow for sure. But think about temptation for a moment. I mean, temptation, that's, that's Satan's realm. That's his strong suit. How old Satan really loves to get into our minds, doesn't he? He's given us a world full of temptation. I mean, think about it. I mean, I, I've kind of boiled down all of Satan's temptations, everything in this world that he's left us into to, to three kind of main groups. First is physical desires. The second is possessions. The third is pride and power. You know, whether we want to believe it or not, he's got all of us in his grip somewhere in those three categories. You see, when we fall into his inclinations, when we follow his counsel, when we allow him into our mind with those temptations, you know what it does? It always leads to evil. C.S. Lewis once said, Evil comes from the abuse of free will. Just like the guy named Doug in the beginning of the story that had to flip a coin 140 times to get the result that he wanted that said he should go to the game instead of going to church. When we abuse free will, that's when we can expect that our actions will reflect evil. Now, to talk about free will for a moment, God gave it to us. But he didn't give it to us to use it so that we could do as we please. No. God gave us free will so that we might serve him out of will and not fear. When we abuse our free will, when we choose to do what we please and not what pleases God, the result is inevitably evil. That's why it's crucial that our free will is in line with God's will. A couple of examples. David. <laughs> David never imagined that sleeping with Bathsheba would lead him to kill his dear friend. His friend, Uriah, loses unborn child, further lead to the curse being placed on his family. Adam never imagined that he'd find himself in a position where he would end up partaking of the fruit, ushering in original sin for the rest of creation, being banished from the garden, a lifetime of backbreaking work, and thereby bringing death to all of mankind. David and Adam, they're two prime examples of men who let those three areas of their life, physical desires, possessions, power and pride, change their hearts and minds. And it led them to exercise their free will not in service to God, but in service to themselves. That brings me back to where we started. David wrote in Psalm 37, verse 23, he said, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. You know what I get from that verse? What I get from that verse is we all have free will as believers. However, when we succumb to the temptations of the world, the temptations of our family, the temptations from our friends and co-workers, what we do is we take our free will and we turn it against God, and it's evil. It's the result of the evil influence of Satan on our lives. The psalmist, David, he said it best there, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You know, it's interesting, he didn't stop there. Oh no. He, he you know, David was great at, at crafting words in a way to, to leave you hanging, because there's more there. I'm going to tell you, when I exercise my free will in service to myself, I can tell you from my own past, there's no delight in my way. When it comes to free will, we have to be sure that we understand its purpose. 
And that purpose is to use it to serve the Lord gladly. And when we do, David promised us there, we'll have that glorious delight when we serve the Master. I pray and hope that that, that message did something for you today. I hope that you apply it to your lives. As you're looking and making choices in your life and you're saying, is this my will, God's will, free will, always understand that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and they're free from all of those worldly temptations. Have a blessed day in the Lord. We look forward to seeing you at God's house Sunday morning. This has been your Daily Dose, a ministry of Faith Baptist Church. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today and click the bell next to the button to sign up for email notifications each time we live stream or release a new video. To learn more about faith, please visit our website, fitinatfaith.com, for more information about our church. Have a great day in the Lord.